Welcome everyone. So what we've got here today is a Yes Welder plasma cutter that we're going to be um, trying out this evening. Um, we're going to dive pretty much right into it. I'm going to try to talk as I go, but briefly, Yes Welder reached out to me and said, hey, would you be willing to, to uh, try out this uh, plasma cutter? I said, sure, but I would like to uh, eventually give it away if I could. And they said, yes, make a few videos with it. And then uh, I want to give it away to one of you guys. I don't know what I'm pointing at, but more or less, we're going to op open this thing up. We're going to try it out, see how it works, see what it does, and uh, maybe here in about a month or two, um, we're going to hold a giveaway. I'm not sure how we're going to do it yet, but we're going to be giving this thing away. But I just want to go ahead and try it out and see how it works for myself. So we're going to dive right in. I did uh, cut this already just to see that there was indeed a plasma cutter in here. We've got the manual, operator's manual. We have, we have, um, I think this is the air regulator and some packaging there. Also, I don't really have a great table right now. I'm not set, quite set up yet in the shop. Uh, is this separate or is this together? That's separate. We've got our torch, you call it a torch? Yes, plasma cutting torch. <clears throat> got an airline, got our ground and we got our adapter to 220 and we have our plasma cutter not too shabby this thing weighs basically nothing at all <clears throat> um, if you follow my channel, you will know that I just recently bought a hypertherm. And while you may or may not know, hypertherm is uh, up there with the one of the top of the, you know, top of the line machines. Um, but not everybody can afford that. So when when uh, Yeswell reached out to me and said, "Hey, would you be willing to um, review this or try it out and everything?" I said, "Yeah, sure," because I want, you know, like I said, not everybody can afford the best of the best, and you don't always need the best of the best. Um, you know, it's, it's nice to have, but if you are a hobby welder, hobby this, you know, and you just need to make a few cuts, maybe this is right up your alley. You can go check it out for yourself on Yes Welder. There should be a link in my description or some sort of um, affiliate link. I'm not sure yet, but I will uh, drop it down below whatever you need to go. But first impressions, like I said, it's pretty light. Um, seems like a plasma cutter. I like the knob on it. It's got infinite... Uh, it's got, it's kind of clicky. Can't really hear it, I don't think. It's kind of clicky. Anyhow, I like that. It goes all the way around. Um, pulling off in the back. We've got our air inlet back here. And I'm not quite sure how this air filter comes with some sort of bracket, I think, that mounts to the back. We'll have to figure that out. Um, but let me, let me dig into this briefly and make sure that we uh that i'm not gonna go putting stuff together and then do it wrong so let me check this out real quick i didn't exactly see in the manual where they talked about putting this together so we are just gonna have to more or less figure it out for ourselves i don't have a wrench that's gonna fit back there so i'm just being easy getting as snug as i can here um i did see here we go, got <clears throat> quick connects. I think the quick connects go in and out of this here filter. They've already got some um, Teflon on them, so I'm not gonna put anything on. Pretty certain that the this is going here somehow. It needs to go like this. So yeah, we're gonna take this off. We get a screwdriver to put that on. So we're going we're going into here. Obviously, we've got two of these here to run a quick connect on this side, but. I'm just going to put a regular um, 
uh, what do you call it, regular quick connect for my air fitting on there. So I'm going to get one of those. Directional arrow, pretty sure that air is flowing this way. So, yeah, mount this up, and then we're going to put the um, <clears throat> put a quick connect here, and then we're going to run some of this hose from this quick connect to this quick connect here, like so. So it won't be a long length of hose, but they give you if you want to hardwire this in, um, hardwire. If you want to plumb this in to an outlet you have, like a um, a quick connect in your wall or something you can do this and quick connect this to here and then vice versa into the wall so <clears throat> that's an option next we're just going to put a short piece of hose here Something like that. Okay. That should be good. <clears throat> um you didn't notice already this is a 110 220 machine um, comes pre-wired for this and then it has <clears throat> the adapter now um, I know my uh, my good buddy JC Smith has um, talked about this but the to me this should be the other way around you should have the 220 plug here and then have the adapter switched around because you could <clears throat> plug this into your wall and then have this laying around and think, oh, I can plug, um, you know, regular plug into it, you know, grind or whatever. And then you're essentially you've got a overpowered, it's going to burn something up. So as long as you understand that you can't plug a normal grinder into this, you're fine. But this goes into here and then you can run 220. But we're going to try it on both tonight, see what happens. Um, got the air. Let me get a quick connect for the back. Okay, next up is the ground, nothing to it. Um, I do like having a re removable ground. Um, just makes it nice if you're trying to carry it and carry it somewhere, transport or whatever. That way you eliminate all the kinds of cables sticking out, but that goes in there just like that. Decent, decent. Uh, ground clamp got quite a bit of tension to it not bad at all and we have the torch itself there's some stuff in here okay so Actually feels pretty, I mean, it's not a, doesn't feel, what's the word to look for? It feels, it feels good in the hand. It's different. Um, <clears throat> not sure what this is. Probably like a 10 foot, 10 foot lead on this. And we've got three connections here to make. Which side does that washer go on? I think it's gonna go on the outside. So let me put this one here first because I can wrap the hoses, not the hoses, wrap the cables around the other hoses here. <clears throat> so I'm just gonna wrap this. Slightly, just take up some of the slack. I hope I'm getting this on camera because 
you and I know that it's easier said than done. So that should be ready to go. Make sure I didn't forget anything in here. All that. Open this up. So the only thing that I'm not seeing which isn't a big deal, but I'm not seeing any um, extra consumables. We've got, I'm not sure what this is, if this is a different cup for this. Is that what that is? Mm, do I know what this is? Mm, I don't know what that is yet. But we've got a drag. We got like a drag tip kind of looking thing. I think that just, yep, it just slides all over that so that way it's not touching. <clears throat> but yeah, all in all, I mean, it's not a bad little machine. Swirl ring, electrode, nozzle. All good there. So yeah, let's uh, look, we're gonna hook it up to 110 first, see what it does, and then we will bump up to the other thing. And what does this do? Is this for part of the torch? Yeah, I think this is how you take out the consumables, yep. So. This is your electrode. This is your little key. What does that do? I'm not sure. That does that. This is probably a multi-tool for several of their machines, I'm guessing. Um, but all in all, it almost it looks like as if um, I don't know if you can see that or not, but like they test tested this machine to make sure it work. It doesn't look brand new. Not a big deal. I think I just figured out what this is. This goes over this. Which is a... Which is a... Yep, that's what that is. Okay. That's cool because it, that way you... It's a quick... Everything's a quick disconnect now. That way you don't have to use this. <clears throat> for this anyway. So... That should be good to go there. Let's get this plugged in and see what happens. I forgot this. Forgot. Oh, forgot to put the little washer on here. All right, so. I don't want to, I know a little bit about this machine, but not a whole lot, but this is a, it's a direct start. I think that's what the DS stands for. Cut 65 DS, so it's not a high freak start. So if um, you've got technology such as a plasma table, it's not gonna interfere. I'm not sure how it works yet. It's like a, like a um, blowback start, something they call it. I can't remember exactly, but basically, it's not a high freak uh, machine, so it shouldn't interfere with any of your other devices in the in your shop if you're having trouble with that. So let's get this thing hooked up, like I said, for the third time. So I have a other filter, so I'm going to go ahead and use this um, in addition to this just because it doesn't have, like I said, I, don't, I didn't see any more consumables in it, so just to try to make it last as long as we can. Um, we're gonna do that. We're plugged in. What else am I forgetting? I need some safety glasses. 
All right, we should be ready to fire this up. I got my glasses here. All right, let's see what we can make happen here. All right, so that's kind of cool because I think it's sensing the line voltage, which it says 123 volts. Um, this is a cut 65, but on the uh, 110, it's only going to go up to 45 amps, my understanding. We've got, I hope you can see this, it's kind of a bright light, but we've got 2T and 4T hold. If you don't know what that is, 2T, I think, is um, you pull you pull the trigger, to, you keep pulling the trigger to cut, you let off to stop cutting. 4T, you pull the trigger once, pull, let go, it starts, pull, let go, it stops. We're going to leave it on 2T because that's what I do. Um, I'm not sure if this is a, I think it's cut and gouge, not sure, I need to check the manual real quick. Alright, so I wasn't sure what this did, but now I've got some uh, better understanding. So, <clears throat> the pilot arc time LED, one to, 1 to 20 seconds, so that's that first one. I don't know what we need, so let's go, let's go, let's go, five. Pilot arc current. So that's the second one. The current some 12 to 25. Let's go with 20. And then cutting current and then post flow. Let's go with 10 seconds post flow. But yeah. So the third one is your amperage, what you're cutting at. Um, and then like I said before, what's this other one? I didn't know what this was before either, but this is your gas check. Um, so right now it's in cutting mode. You can turn it to gas check and then it'll open the um, Turn your valve and I think there is supposed to be some sort of little bubble so you can check your flow or something, but We've also got a PSI indicator back here. So we're gonna go with something like 60 70 to start We got 70 Let's go 75, something like that. Go back to cutting. So now if I pull the trigger, let's see what happens. Yeah. We've got uh, we got power. So let's go ahead and try this thing out. So in my shop, I don't do a whole lot of sheet metal other than the thinnest thing that I cut typically eighth inch plate so that's what we're starting out here with this is some eighth inch plate this is it this is how it's been for who knows how long and we're just gonna see what happens here and go from there it's a plasma cutter No, no problems there. Let me get a straight edge. Is this a straight edge? Let me see what we can do here. knock the dross off. I hope you can see that, but that's a really clean cut. Got a little dross on top. Nothing to uh, nothing to cry about there. Like I said, we don't we don't do a whole lot of thin uh, sheet metal. So if you've got um, 16 gauge, 20 gauge, something that uh, you're working on, I think you know this is obviously uh, going to cut through that like butter. Um, 
So we're bumping up the quarter inch now. This is some old rusty quarter inch. And let's see what happens here. We're still on 110 volts. A little bit more uh, dross on the back, but again, pop that right off. Not bad at all. You can definitely tell it was, uh, you know, struggling, uh, if you want to say that. Obviously, we're on 110 volts. Uh, cutting a quarter, quarter inch, it don't do it fast, but it'll do it. Oh, <clears throat> I think we tripped the breaker. So I did just trip the breaker, but it's an old breaker, and I mean, we're cutting quarter inch. Let's just drop it down to 40 and see if it still does it or not. But I mean, I'm I'm already impressed with uh, you know cutting cutting quarter inch plate on 110 volts. Like I said, I don't do it quick, but it'll do it. So let's try. And so yeah, that's that's pretty uh, pretty pretty good in my eyes. We're still in 120 volts. We're on 40, so we don't trip the breaker. I've got some half inch plate here. Um, this was cut by a torch. I don't have uh, expectations of this cutting through here, but we're gonna see. We're gonna see what can happen. I'm not gonna cut through a lot. I'm just gonna um, just try to cut through about an inch or so and see if we're even getting there. This is gonna be slow, but we're trying out 110 volts is what we're doing. So, <clears throat> what's happening, I think, is the the initial pilot arc or what have you. I think it's limiting us from, it's like not engaging long enough to, it's more or less losing its ground, if you will, um, because it's, it's trying. Yeah, we just tripped the breaker again. So, anyhow, we're on 20 amp breaker, but like I said, it's it's an old breaker. It may do better. As you can tell, we cut through probably a good three quarters of that on 110 volts, but it just didn't have the. It just it just kept cutting out like it wasn't making connection, so it would just it would just fall out because we're having to go so slow. But let's bump it up to uh, full power and see what happens here. All right, we are now full power. We're gonna dial this up all the way. Um, we're just trying, like I said, if I'm if I'm gonna cut something, I just more or less max the machine out, and then I just dictate how much, uh, how fast I cut. If you're cutting sheet metal, um, you can probably turn this down so that way you don't warp the metal as much. But for what I do, I always just max the machine out, and then I just go from there. So um, we're gonna go ahead, try it out. We're gonna start with some eighth inch just as a I guess a baseline you could call it um, just to make sure that we're operating again
You can tell that's leaving very little dross on that. Let's go some quarter inch. Excellent. Like butter. My air pressure's dropped a little bit. We're probably down about 65 psi. The presser hasn't kicked on yet. Um, <clears throat> that's a story in itself. All right, let's go next to the 110 volt cut here. See what happens. That did, that did really well. That did pretty freaking sweet if you ask me. I think the dross is stuck on that old uh, oxyacetylene cut. But can you see that? Am I pointed at the right thing there? I pointed at That's half inch plate. Half inch plate, read it and weep. So that's pretty uh, pretty cool. Let me put a straight edge over on this side. Try to get try to get a, as clean a cut as possible here. Half inch plate. Ain't nothing wrong with that whatsoever. I'm I'm thoroughly impressed with this little thing. Like I said, the only the only downside that I saw was it didn't already come with extra consumables. I don't know how long these are going to last, um, but you are going to see this in the uh, in future videos. But let's try to find some. I don't know. Let's go find some something bigger. If I got anything bigger. All right, I've got some. I've got some three-quarter inch plate here. Um, I have something thicker. I have like three-quarter, and then I have like inch and a half. So we're gonna try this. If, I mean, honestly, I know I've said this before, but me personally, if if it's bigger than a half inch, typically I'm just gonna cut it with a torch, um, with the uh, the old oxyacetylene, just because at that point it's almost it's like a you know what's what's more efficient there in a sense because anything bigger than that you're paying you know if you're trying to cut one inch plate all day long with with a plasma cutter you're going to pay a lot of money for the plasma cutter so that's why um the torch is just kind of like a budget kind of option but let's see what happens here <clears throat> three quarter inch plate let's see what happens That is, uh, that is not bad at all, my friends. That is a really good cut. Um, again, travel speed, as you can see, it was very slow, but it's gonna do it. Now, I'm not even gonna, I'm not even gonna attempt anything thicker. Like I said, this is, this is way thicker than I would even thing to cut with a plasma cutter unless I had like a you know three phase out the wazoo mac daddy plasma cutter but <clears throat> yeah the proof is in the pudding and I like it
This is obviously just kind of an, an, an initial review. I'm not sure what the um, what the specified cut capacity of this machine is. I don't remember. I want to say it's like seven eighths or something, and this is three quarters. So we're 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 right there. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, I'm hoping I'm catching all this on video because you know me. I don't know how to. Don't know how to videotape sometimes so i guess that's going to do it for the initial unboxing slash overview first cuts bob's your uncle fanny's your aunt whatever you want to call it uh that's going to do it for this short little video and i have no uh no regards as saying i am impressed for for the the money that this is which i'm not even sure of the price um to be honest but they have all kinds of deals going on uh, every so often. So just if you're in the market, check them out. But this is a this is a very um, budget friendly machine that can cut three quarter inch plate. I don't know what more you want. Um, we will be using this in the future. You will see in videos to come for sure. And I guess that's all I have to say. Thank you everyone for watching. Two thumbs up and we'll see you in the next video. We'll be putting this through the paces, but like I said, don't forget we will have a giveaway on this. And I'm sorry the compressor's been running this whole time, but I don't feel like uh, redoing the whole everything I just said right there. So I apologize, but thank you for watching. We'll see you on the next one.